Dude, this is the coolest remote because I can do black screen. Awesome. Hi, guys. You. Hi, guys. All right, good, cool. You guys are awake. Fantastic. I'm going to talk to you guys about monitoring MySQL with OpenTSDB. Um, I forgot to change Percona Live 2013 to SF MySQL August 13th. I, August 13th. Wow. Go home, Jeff. Um, so sorry about that. But yes, my name is Jeffrey Anderson. Uh, I am a DBA, or excuse me, I am a database operations engineer at Box, which is a fancy way of calling myself a database administrator. Um, it looks really cool on your business cards. So. But uh, my my day to day is tooling and administration for MySQL and HBase. I'm actually our HBase lead at uh, Box as well, which is maybe part of the reason that we enjoy OpenTSD so much because it also runs on HBase. Um, and I also do this uh, biweekly Google Hangout called DB Hangouts. <clears throat> this was something that we started up after MySQL Connect last year. Every two weeks, get a bunch of DBAs on a Google Hangout, and we kind of talk about databasey things. Um, and it started as a small thing, and it's gotten pretty popular, and I encourage you guys to check it out and watch some of the YouTube videos that we've recorded. So, uh, disclaimer, I do have to talk about my company, which is actually a pretty fun place to work, and if you are looking for a job, please talk to me after the meetup. But, um, yeah, what Box does is we are a file uh, storage platform, uh, primarily targeted at enterprises, and so many of you guys are probably familiar with products like Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, same thing. Um, I mean, we, f we, we focus more on enterprise, but we also uh, work for the small business and for users as well. And we have a very feature-rich feature application, uh, uh, web application. So if you haven't used it before, I'd encourage you to check it out, you know, see if you like it, see what you, li uh, what you don't like maybe, and definitely be vocal about it. Cool, so let's talk about the situation, because I'm here to talk about monitoring. Um, so you guys are DBAs, so you probably use Percona monitoring plugins. I hope, or something you know that's just around there, same thing. You know, a bunch of Cacti plugins, a bunch of Nagios plugins. And you might even have your own Nagios checks that you've added, you know, things that come up that are really weird, like long-running queries happen. Um, maybe your MySQL config changes for some reason. That's what this one is here. Maybe a DBA changed a variable and didn't store it, and so a server's running differently than everyone else. Um, thing, things that happen. So you add more Nagios checks to find these, right? Um, or maybe you use some other system that's not Nagios, but again, you still, you're trying to find, you know, as, as more edge cases happen and things that take your site down, or just a server maybe, that'd be good too, um, you add stuff for it. Uh, and, and you probably use Percona Toolkit or MySQL Utilities from Oracle, um, or any other slew of just MySQL Toolkit kind of stuff. And, you know, you'll be using maybe Percona Toolkit, and you use, use Stalk so you can look at your servers and figure out what they're doing when they get a little upset. Um, you know, maybe you're going to look at poor man's profiler and use that to try and figure out what's happening to a server that's in a real bad state. And maybe you're just running PT Query Digest occasionally to see what the heck is actually going into your server. You know, some really weird queries showing up a lot. You need to know that they're there. Um, but then you get a lot of servers, and so you have cacti graphs that look like this, and you just, um, I can't even count how many problems might be here, and it's just a nightmare. And after staring at this for a while, maybe you don't have a NOC team, maybe you're one or t one of one DBA or one of three DBAs, and this just turns into a hilarious first world problem. Um, at least I like to think it's a funny first world problem. Maybe it's not, but you know, there's a lot of servers and it's really exhausting to look at all of them. And you know, this happens when you start, you know, you go from one instance of MySQL in production to 10, and you need to start caring about more of them uh, and less about individual services potentially. So this is where OpenTSDB comes into the picture. And OpenTSDB is a distributed, scalable, time series database. It was created, oh, excuse me, it runs on HBase and it was created by Benoit Sigour. And so at Box, the way we have it set up, we have our HBase cluster. Um, we throw t the time series daemons from OpenTSDB. We have clusters of them, one for storing data and one for act interactive querying. Uh, we put an HA proxy layer in front of that so that we can round robin through them without causing you know, major pain or bottlenecks. Uh, and then you have your database and maybe a front end. And okay, that's a joke, right? Because you're going to have a lot of databases and a lot of front ends. Da, da. Cool. So, and then you'll have your laptop because you actually need, you actually care about the data that you're probably collecting and want to look at it and know that things are going well or going poor. Um, so your servers will be pushing metrics into this pipeline. 
Um, and then your, your laptop or your whatever interface you're using, you're gonna hit the OpenTSDB API to get the data out. Um, so, I mean, why would you even care about OpenTSDB? Like, you've got cacti and everything already. Why should you go through the pain to, like, set up HBase and set up this whole other system and pipeline? And, well, it's fast. I can't even begin to tell you how fast this stuff is. It's very easy to scale. If it gets slow, add more servers. Like, it's, that's, it's literally, that's all you do. You stand up more servers. If you've puppeted this or if you have Chef or CF Engine, once you've got your configs figured out, you just add more servers and put the config on them. You're good to go. It's very, very easy to populate. And by this, I mean it's very easy to put metrics and collect, collect metrics and put them into the system. Um, and lastly, it's definitely very easy to query. And I'll show you some examples of like just querying the interface to get some data out of it. So let's talk about collecting data because you guys are operations folks probably. You probably care about collecting data a whole bunch because you really want to know what's happening. So since this is a MySQL meetup, we're going to write a collector for MySQL. Nice little shell script. Just, you know, show global status. We just want to know what the server's doing. And for each of those, we're going to put, we're going to print out a, print out all the uh, counters that we get back with a special prefix, and we're just going to use MySQL dot. Um, and so I'll just show you the output of this real quick. So you effectively get everything from show global status, MySQL dot, that variable. Uh, you dump a timestamp and then the value that you got back. And the last thing is tags. And so just to point it out real quick, this is going to be your metric name, the thing that you get for your actual counters, the timestamp of when it happened, the value for it, and then key value tags. And you can have as many of those as you want, up to seven, I think, right now, is what it's hard-coded in the server. But you can have multiple tags. And these help you for identifying and looking at servers in aggregate in, in different ways. And I'll show you this a little more in the interface in a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. So you want to get these metrics into OpenTSDB. You could set up a cron that just pipes, just uses Netcat and throws them into the server. It run, usually runs on 4.2.4.2. But don't, don't do this. This, this is kind of janky and gross. And I'm just going to say you should feel bad if you do this. Let me just prefix it that way. There's this really cool tool called T-Collector. It's a data collection framework for OpenTSDB. It was written by the authors of OpenTSDB. And it's a Python daemon that you can set up and will just kind of manage data collection for you. And you just hand it stuff to do data collection with. So if you were to take T-Collector and throw it on your database server, you'd kind of get a directory structure like this. And the thing you care about most is this collector's directory. Because under here, there's a series of other directories. And these are actually intervals and seconds that you should run uh, a specific collector. So things on the zero directory, you always want those to run. Those are probably collectors that need to maintain some sort of state. And they'll just do a sleep for like maybe 30 seconds while they're collecting information. Then you have the 15 second ones. In this case, dfstat is a disk free collector, just collects information about free space on the host. Uh, the MySQL collector, let's run it every 30 seconds because that's twice the granularity we get from cacti. Bam. Uh, and then the last one is one that we wrote at Box. Uh, it's called PTTCP model. It actually simply uses the Bracona Toolkit TCP model script, which is actually no longer in Bracona Toolkit. We had to go backport it. When we upgraded and it went away, this collector broke pretty horribly. But I'll show you what we use this for. This is actually a really cool collector we've got too. <laughs> so let's talk about querying data. You've got your data in there. You're, you're running T-Collector. It's shipping all of your metrics from all of your servers. Um, so here's the interface. It's a little washed out, but I'm, so I'm sorry about that. But um, it's, uh, it's very clearly designed by an engineer. Yep. Don't be fooled. It, it is actually extremely powerful. And so let's say I want to just look at percent idle CPU on my databases. And so I'm actually, there's actually three time series plotted here. And the reason is because of this bad boy, or these two here. So these are the tags that uh, you had. So in the collector example I showed you, you just had host equals. Well, you can have other tags, like maybe you have a server type tag. And so in this case, I'm actually plotting all application databases. And another tag that we have is cluster. So this, if you throw an asterisk in there, it breaks out and plots every possible value for that metric, uh, and it just draws an individual time series. So this actually draws every cluster that we have. And so I'm not, you know, it doesn't take an expert to realize that th that kind of step function looks wrong. Doesn't, you know, you should, should be a nice normal pattern over a period of time. So that, something's up with that. And um, this is actually our sharded database cluster. So what we can do is plug shard into the cluster tag. And now we have only the shard databases. And the other thing is we throw an asterisk into the host tag. 
so that it plots all the hosts by default. And now you can see there's very clearly an outlier, which is server 22 in this graph. Everyone else is kind of doing fine, not using too much CPU. Server 22 is like just chewing through CPU and then magically recovers and then chews through it again. It's a really weird behavior. So we can put server 22 into that host field so we have only that on the graph just to kind of clean it up and get a nice easy thing to look at. And then what we can do, this isn't enough information for us to figure out the problem. And so this, the, the problem with cacti that I found was if a graph doesn't have all the metrics you care about in it, you have to sit there and kind of look at one and look at the other and see if the time matches up. Well, with OpenTSDB, we're just gonna add another metric. And so I punch in threads connected uh, for server 22. And now you see this kind of thing where as threads, the number of connected threads on this server rises, the load, or the, the idle CPU goes down, so the load on the machine's going up. It's doing more work as more threads connect. Um, and the other thing I did here is check this right axis box. So all threads connected will be on the right Y axis, and the percent idle will be on the left. And so this allows you to mix and match metrics. You know, maybe the Y axes might clobber each other. You can split them apart so that you can look at them both and see the nice step functions kind of correlate. Um, and so in this case, this was actually a problem. We had a really nasty query get onto production after a code push. Um, and we have a, uh, we run PT kill against all of our database servers as a daemon. So it'll go in there, if it finds long queries, it beats them and it whacks them. And we have it to kill anyone else who's following that. So the thing we have here is queries are stacking up and then we start whacking all the queries and that's why it recovers and goes up again. But we were able to find the problematic query because of this pretty quickly and, and resolve it. So now let's say I wanna get a closer look and get a better timeline because I have to do a postmortem. You can just click and drag with your mouse you know, and it'll automatically just zoom you in. And now you've got a much closer view. We can see this happened around 7.45 a.m. And the best part is I can just copy paste the URL and send it to somebody so they can see the exact thing I'm looking at now. After all that you know, digging I did, copy paste and throw it at a, another person to look at too. Uh, and as you can see, I mean, this, it's literally the start and end times, the metric that I plopped in, and all the other information from our, just from our digging is right in the URL, so it's very easy to share. Um, and since we're ops people, we also like just raw data. You know, maybe we don't want to look at that ugly GNU plot graph. That's fine, okay. You can also get the raw data, and by getting raw data, you can do some really cool things, like build a custom interface that does week over week graphs, and allows you to easily find problems and do anomaly detection. And so this is actually a snapshot of our newest tool that we open sourced called Status Wolf. Um, and the beauty of this is it allows us to build dashboards. We can plug in all of our open TSDB information. Uh, we can easily draw week over week graphs. And we also, um, our VP of Tech Ops had built an anomaly detection uh, model that we can put in here too. And so they'll build a confidence model of data over the like, last three weeks of data and highlight outliers in the graph, which is really, really cool for finding problems. Status Wolf. I'll have links at the end to show you for sure. Um, and so currently it only works with OpenTSDB, but I think we've, we've tried our best to engineer the code, so you could arguably plug it into other monitoring tools to get the data out. So I'd encourage you to check it out on GitHub, pull a copy, file issues, and I'll talk more about it at the end of the presentation and if you guys want to know more. But that API call, it's pretty much the same as the web front end call. The difference is it's uh, you hit slash Q and you throw ASCII at the end and you get the raw data back and you can cut it up with awk or you know, uh, any other tool of your choosing and you can even write your own code to kind of parse metrics and do fun things with them on the fly. So how do we leverage OpenTSDB for MySQL? Um, well, some of the stuff we use at Box, we, we, we use Percona, so we have user statistics as an extension, so we have that enabled on all of our servers, and we collect the information that you can get from show user underscore statistics, and so we were just kind of throwing these things into OpenTSDB initially to see what kind of data do we have available that we can look at, and honestly, like, it's become really, really powerful for various things, and in the case of user stats, this gives us kind of a poor man's audit report we can actually look at you know, how many times a specific user issued a, uh, a select statement um, or how many failed logins they might have had. And so this allows us to get a little more insight into the servers where you might have to get a commercial plugin to start with. Um, another one we have is the table statistics uh, extension that's in Percona. We just collect this information and this allows us to look at information around uh, index changes, table changes, and aggregate. And you can also break it out by table and by schema. And so with the way we have our environment set up, it makes it very easy to figure out, do we have a hot database schema on a single instance of MySQL? This can allow us to track that down. And then 
Um, the uh, other one we have is table information from information schema. And you can actually get this by just running this query. And so we run this query every 30 minutes, I think, and dump the data into OpenTSDB, because this can be a little expensive. You're kind of calculating the size of the tables and all this other stuff that is a little invasive, but getting it periodically allows us to get some very basic graphing around table growth over time. Um, so we don't have to run it one off, one at a time, like we just have this information available to us. And it's allowed us to write other tools for capacity modeling. So we can look at you know, the growth of records, uh, growth of tables over time, number of records in them, and we can also look at growth of the data files over time and kind of gauge, you know, in two weeks we're gonna need a whole lot more servers to sustain some growth that we have. Um, and last but not least was that PT TCP model collector I was talking about. Um, that actually allows us to get query throughput information. So we can see if a MySQL server starts doing less work than it normally does. And this has been very valuable for tracking down some hard to find issues that are normally kind of masked by other things. Um, but if you see that query throughput starts going down, but the server still seems okay, then maybe your queries are taking longer or there's something making them get stuck in the server. So this, will, this is a nice early indicator for that. And we actually, we threw our, our collector up on our GitHub account too, if you wanna grab a copy of it, check it out. It's a beautiful collector, it's a shell script that runs TCP dump for 10 seconds, kills it, and then ships the data it got out of it. I never thought I would be proud of saying that we run TCP dump for 10 seconds in an automated thing. It's a little janky feeling, but it actually works very well. We've run it for over a year now. So, and then there's other common metrics that you can watch, you know, any of the MySQL status counters, maybe that are, you know, I didn't talk about already. You know, QPS is a big one you're gonna wanna watch on your servers, make sure it's, you know, got a nice, make sure there's not a sudden drop in that or something. Um, number of threads that are connected to the server, you know, there's nothing worse than getting an alert saying you're, you've chewed through all of your available connections on the server, it'd be nice to see that if there's a ramp up that you can help avoid. Um, temp tables on disk, that's a good indicator of, you know, queries that might need optimization. You know, if you remove those temp tables, you can run faster. Uh, and just other things along those lines. And then there's various service statistics. So, you know, that's all the MySQL specific stuff. Then you want to look at like maybe your idle CPU or how much work it's doing on IO, uh, free disk space that you have, and uh, like I said a second ago, IO utilization. Um, and network traffic's the other big one. Maybe you get a flood of really big packets all of a sudden. It'd be nice to know that might be the cause of a problem. Um, so other future collectors, and so these are the ones that we haven't built yet, but we've been kind of thinking about. It'd be nice to get some of our PT Query Digest stuff uh, into OpenTSDB. Um, we kind of shelved this one for a while because MySQL is in a pretty good state for us, and we had other higher priority things to do, but I mean, we, we run PT Query Digest regularly on all of our servers. We collect about, we sample about 1% of queries on all of our production machines, and do a digest on them, and we ship that to a tool that we wrote called Anemometer, also available on GitHub if you guys want to check it out. Um, and it allows us to look at the query digest information we got back in a graphical format and identify outliers through there. And so I could see us shipping some of that data to OpenTSDB to save us on the graphing in our own interface. Um, data that you can get out of show engine in a DB status. And of course, this is information that should be counters but isn't right now. Um, so maybe there's some other stuff we can kind of grep out of there. We haven't really thought to dig too deeply because we're, again, we're pretty content where we are and I mean, we'll just see as we go. Uh, and then any other stuff that might be in performance schema in 5.6, because a whole slew of new things, including query statistics, process list information, and background thread information. And so just being able to access all that stuff and throw it into OpenTSDB over time would make it very easy to look at this stuff um, you know, when you have issues and being able to correlate problems before. So how does this change things for, for you? you know, you're setting up this new monitoring tool. Um, well, you're gonna collect all of the data, like all of it. You know, you're gonna retain all the granularity, you know, more than a minute, hopefully. Um, and you're gonna find all the problems. And if you don't find them, someone else will, because once they learn how to use the tool, they're gonna realize how much easier it is to discover things. Uh, so in all seriousness, though, um, the, the, the big things that you get with OpenTSDB is it's very easy to see aggregate graphs. So once you get to a point where you have a lot of servers, it's very easy to see them just kind of lumped as a group. And if you want, you can try. You can dig down and find the outliers too. Um, it's very easy to build the graphs on the fly. That's actually one of the best parts of it. You know, one of the, the biggest hangups I have with Cacti is creating graphs for it is a real chore. I'm not sure if any of you have had to do it. And if you do, you are a superstar. Um, and you should stop doing that and use OpenTSDB instead. <laughs> um, you maintain full granularity forever, forever. Because it's not using RRDs, it doesn't auto downsample. That data is 
perfect granularity until you delete it consciously. Like, it will stay there forever at full granularity. There's no auto downsampling. Um, and you can do API requests to get the raw data. You don't want the interface, and you can use that to build your own fun tools and whatnot. And the other cool thing is you can do cluster-wide kind of checks. So there's a Nagios check, or a Nagios plugin they wrote called Check TSD that you just say, here's an open TSDB server, here's a metric, and kind of give it like thresholds to look at. And that way, instead of having to do some weird stuff where you auto-aggregate stats from your servers to do a check on them, you can easily just get it out of OpenTSDB. And it also means you can start moving away from individual server checks that just go off all the time when you get more servers and have, you know, you only care if your app, maybe your application cluster is unhealthy. And unhealthy is defined by some, th some way the graphs look. Instead of, if one out of 100 servers has a problem, you probably don't care. If half of them have a problem, you do. And it's nicer to get one page instead of 50. Um, so challenges that you might see switching, and, and this is just our experience at Box, the challenges we had switching. Uh, the big one was aggregates were the default. You know, when we set up OpenTSDB, we were at the kind of the point where we were going from like a, maybe a three instance production setup to a lot more. Um, and just trying to get used to the fact that you don't look at an individual host, you have to look at everyone. And if one server has a problem, it's not that big of a deal. Um, mouse zooming was actually a big problem too because that didn't exist. I mean, if you guys use cacti, you know, you look at a cacti graph, you zoom, and you have your new cacti graph that you zoomed in on. OpenTSDB didn't have that. Um, I wrote a patch for it one night, and it, like, everyone started using OpenTSDB the next day. Like, that was the biggest problem that we found was not being able to easily zoom in on graphs. And once that was there, it became a very useful tool. Um, Auto-suggest for the metrics. It's a little, still a little flaky. Um, we actually, we built a custom tool that just dumps all the metrics out of the server on a, it's a cron job that runs every 15 minutes, writes them into a JSON file, and then we have a nice interface that just exposes that. But I, I believe the auto-suggestion problem, I'm gonna put that in quotes, is actually severely improved in the newest version of OpenTSDB. We're currently running an older version of one dot something. I actually don't know, I didn't, I didn't manage it. But, um, they just announced the release candidate for 2.0 in the past few weeks. So, and I know this was a big thing that was getting fixed. Um, the graphs aren't pretty, <laughs> in quotes. We heard this a lot from uh, managers, managers, as m the bosses of the boss of the boss up the, up the ladder, right? You, you would, you would want to say, oh, we've got this really cool graph that shows how the database servers have been growing over time and we can use it for our capacity planning. And you hand it to the higher up and he looks at it and he's like, this is, this is really ugly. It's just like disgusting. Why are the lines all jaggedy and gross? So we patched that too. And that's, uh, that's actually, if you were to get OpenTSDB. There might be a fire, guys. <laughs> I feel like it's a rave now for my, my talk. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, so there is an option in the interface now. You can check it and it'll smooth out the graph so they don't look as spiky, which is nice to send up. Hmm? Do they just have different graphs? I actually don't know. They do a little, but yeah, it uses GNU plot to draw the graphs under the hood. Um, what was the other one? Oh, migrating from our proof of concept. So when we first had OpenTSDB set up, we had one host in each of our data centers. Um, and that was running an HBase cluster, which is funny to run a cluster on a single machine, uh, an OpenTSDB setup, and a few other things. And we, we had T Collector set up in a few places and we we're shipping metrics, but no one really used it, no one really looked at it. It was just kind of collecting and we were trying to get people to start using it because we were realizing the value. And once that mouse zoom patch hit, um, our single node fell over the next day and we could never keep it up and running because everyone just constantly started using it. And that's when we learned my word of advice to you guys, have at least three nodes. I'd say if you can, just spring for five nodes. You know, have an actual cluster kind of thing so you can kind of tolerate burst traffic. Um, and I mean, you, you can run this in Amazon if you want to as well. Like, you, can, you just need multiple nodes. They don't, you, know, you don't want one beefy node, you want multiple smaller nodes. They can be crappy even. Um, and uh, definitely the other one was uh, data, data pruning might be required. We, we hit a point where we, Build up our disk on the OpenTSDB cluster, the initial one we set up. And uh, we had to go back and trim it down so we only kept three months of data because we were just filling it so aggressively. 
And I mean, when you think about it, like the MySQL collector, there's like 300 status counters. And if you have 300 counters, you know, maybe 50 servers are reporting them. And you know, once you add them up, it, it adds up very quickly. You know, and, and there's a whole slew of things that are in there. Yes? It depends. And I'll give you a few more numbers. I actually didn't get disk information, but I, I, I might have a ballpark I can give you. So let me talk about some quick numbers. For OpenT is to be a box. Um, we currently record 29,577 metrics, um, 95 tag keys. So these were the things like host, cluster. We only have 95 of those, but we have over 5 million possible values for those. So um, the, the reason you really want to use tags is it allows you to have a strictly defined set of metrics, and then the tags allow you to do aggregation by default and drill down afterwards. Um, we have a lot of servers reporting in. Um, I, I don't even know how many. But uh, to give you a rough estimate of storage, the last time I looked at our open TSDB HBase cluster, I think it was around 20 terabytes, maybe, give or take. Um, it's about a year of data. So it, it fills up pretty quickly. Um, I know we had to go back and delete a lot of stuff, and we're actually doing another cleanup round right now. Because um, there is, we did get a few garbage metrics in there over time, but not too many. So, oh, and my favorite. <laughs> the interactive graphs that you can draw on the interface, we always get those in under 300 milliseconds. So it's, it's, it's very snappy. It's not like you're sitting there waiting for a graph to draw too long. It's, by the time you finish typing it in and click, it usually comes right up. Yes? It's whatever you set it to. Yeah, but you, you oh, well, this isn't just for MySQL. We have every machine in our production infrastructure report to this. And every machine reports more than just, you know, disk memory, CPU. They report, you know, if you have a queuing system, they're going to report metrics out of the queue. MySQL is going to report all of its status counters and the other things we have. Um, we have an Oracle database somewhere that reports some Oracle metrics. So. There's just any, any system you run, it's basically if you can write some sort of code that will get data that you feel is valuable that you would consider a metric, all you have to do is print it to standard out and you can get it into this system. Like that, that's the beauty of it. Um, so next steps, I'd encourage you guys to go to try.opentsdb.net. There's a quick, quick and dirty like setup there that you can kind of poke at. I think it only has CPU information, but still it's you know, an excuse to kind of poke at the interface and see what it's like. Um, go to opentsdb.net, the actual page, and check out the Getting Started Guide and check out the overview and see what you think of it and maybe try pulling a copy of it and trying it out. You, know, you, can, you can actually just run one on your laptop real quick and push some data into it to see what it's like. Um, go to the OpenTSDB GitHub. Um, and like I said, Release Candidate 2 came out, or 2.0 Release Candidate came out recently. So that should be on there. If it's not the master branch, they have a branch for it. Pull a copy of that and try it out. See what it's like. You know, look at the information about it. And don't be afraid to contact the authors. Like we all sit on Freenode all day and you know stare at each other idling or something like that when we're supposed to be working. You know, you know how it is, right? Freenode. Um, and definitely, I'd encourage you to go to Box's GitHub. Like I said, Status Wolf. It's I think it's our most active project right now. Uh, it's been getting a lot of development, and the, you know, it's actually replaced almost all of the graphing and monitoring that we have at Box. We used to have things where we'd have cacti graphs and a few other kind of RRD-based graphs on different monitors. They've all been replaced with our status wolf graphs. It's, it's been, again, it's been night and day being able to do week over week and anomaly detection um, ba based on like previous data. Uh, and that's it. Um, again, I work for Box. We're always hiring, and if uh, you're interested, please come talk to me after the presentation. And I'd like to once again thank Lithium for having us here and thank uh, Aaron for getting a hold of me to get me to speak at uh, San Francisco's MySQL meetup. Thanks, guys. You can ask me any questions you want. I will definitely re repeat the questions for you. And then no one has questions. Did you have a question? Yeah. So the question was, it's going to take me a long time to get to it. The, one of the slides I had with a cacti screenshot of um, hundreds of graphs, 
yes, that is an actual graph. Um, I think it's fuzzy enough that you shouldn't be able to make anything out, but it is an actual graph of servers, and it was very painful to look at. Uh, our NOC team really did not like it when we showed it to them. Like, when we finally got a NOC team, we're like, yeah, here's cacti, we're trying to get rid of it. And they're like, yeah, we're, we're no. <laughs> yes? So the question is, do any of our uh, engineers, our app developers, push metrics in? Uh, and the answer is yes. We actually, we worked with them to get, uh, for some of our Scala services that we have been developing, uh, we had them write a connector that plugs into, the, um, I think it was the Coda Hale metrics library. Uh, and that allows them to easily increment counters, uh, do moving window kind of rates on different operations they have, and it'll automatically ship it to OpenTSDB for graphing. Um, and it's actually, it's become a very critical part of our monitoring infrastructure that they do that. Um, so primarily Ops did it, but we also, we have our engineers doing it through the application. And there, there is, um, I can't remember how much completion it had, but there was a project to have a Kafka pipeline that would do real-time analytics through Storm. Like it would pull them, off, pull them off the Kafka pipeline and then dump them into OpenTSDB. Uh, and so that was giving us some very valuable and interesting stuff too. So the question is, do the developers look at the graphs after they put data in them? <laughs> and the answer is definitely. When engineers roll out uh, new code um, or new changes, they, especially our, we have a, a dedicated performance team in our engineering organization, um, they are always looking at this. They're always looking for problems. And they're always looking to see improvements after stuff they've changed. Um, and we're also, as DBAs, we try to be very vocal. You know, uh, just a few days ago, an index hint was added to a piece of code. And we had like load on our servers drop by a significant percentage. We fired an email, and it was it was good all around. You had a question. Uh, and you guys have the I don't know requirements for best practices how you go about the metrics and what goes into the metrics name and what goes into the graph. So the question is, do we have best practices for metrics name for for what goes into a metric name and the tags that we use? Um, not really, that's the thing. OpenTSDB grew very organically at Box for over a year. Um, we've gotten to, and that's why I was saying, we've gotten to a point now where we're starting to pare down and trim things down. But at a high level, um, we try to do it by some sort of like service level breakdown. So any MySQL metrics are always prefixed with MySQL dot. It doesn't matter if they're a status counter or some other thing we collect, it's always prefixed with MySQL dot. Um, HBase metrics and Hadoop metrics are prefixed with Hadoop or HBase dot. Excuse me. Um, Apache inform information from our Apache web servers, Apache dot, uh, so on and so forth. And for tags, um, gen so T Collector will automatically add some tags for you, and you can you can change the code to add other ones as well. Um, by default, we have it always throw a host tag in there, which it's just kind of a requirement. You need to know what host is sending you metrics. Um, we also had it add uh, an additional metric for data center, so that we can discriminate our different data centers uh, when data comes in. Uh, and then over beyond that. Um, uh, our, my team, the database team, we uh, added metrics around the database cluster, the state of the database, if it's actively serving traffic or not, uh, and also its role, if it's a master or a slave. And so we had those automatically get uh, appended to any database metrics that we sh uh, ship. Do you, like, oh, sure. So the question is, do we allow metrics to be automatically registered? Um, currently we do, we're gonna change that now. Um, we, we did initially so that we could get more adoption, um, and so that people could actually see the value in the system. And we've gotten to a point now where we want to trim it down. And it's, it's easy enough to add new metrics if you have it set not to auto-register them. You just have to run a command and give it a, a, the metric name you want to add. Um, and so we actually have a process uh, in Puppet that uh, automatically does that. Yes? So the question is, how do we handle alerting? Um, I talked about that check underscore TSD Nagios plugin. You can use that. Now, is your question, how do we alert off the graphs, or how do we alert about the system itself? Okay, so alert off the graphs, check TSD. Yes? I'm sorry? So the question is, have we evaluated Graphite? Um, I haven't personally. I know two or three other people on, on our ops team did, uh, and they've evaluated it two or three times, and um, the last time we looked at it, I think we set it aside 
for a much longer time because we have OpenTSDB now. Um, but it, um, I'm, I'd be interested to know if, what Graphite does. I mean, I've heard a few people say that it doesn't scale as well. I've heard other people say it scales very well, so I'm actually not sure. Yes, you over there. Same question? Okay. Yes. So the question is, does it hide the complexity of HBase, or, or, or just complexity of the system itself? So I, I, I would say it's very easy to set this up. It's very easy to set this up on your laptop to try it out. Uh, when you decide you want to actually deploy a cluster, um, it's still relatively easy. It's pretty well documented. Um, the, uh, the people that actually set this up didn't know that much about HBase. Um, the people that manage it currently, because I do not manage our OpenTSDB cluster, um, they're more Hadoop knowledgeable, but not as much HBase. Um, but for the most part, I mean, running with the default HBase setup, it's been running pretty well. We haven't had many issues. And like I said, if you encounter problems, you just add more servers. Um, but I would also say that there's a lot of good uh, products and companies that can help you with HBase. And I mean, just off the top of my head, Cloudera, Hortonworks, um, there's a few others, but they have, they, they've open sourced more and more of their tools to make managing HBase clusters simpler. So that's definitely another starting point to look at. Come on, guys, give me more questions. I love answering questions. Yes? So what is our data retention? Um, so once we got our, the cluster we're currently running on set up, um, I want to say we're retaining, I think, about a year and a half of data right now. Like, I think that's the last time we did a purge and we, just, we got everything set up correctly to support it, and, and we had a plan to add more servers over time to support the growth. Um, and I don't think there's plans to trim that anytime soon, but I, I'm not sure. So the question is, as you add more data to OpenTSDB, does the performance suffer? Is that, that right? Yeah. Um, I would say yes, unless you add more servers. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a simple thing of if you have a, a MySQL server and you constantly put stuff in it, there is a point where it starts to slow down. And that is, that's part of the benefit of OpenTSDB. By using HBase, you just stand up some more servers to help, you know, help handle the load. HBase will automatically distribute the data in a uniform fashion. Uh, and OpenTSDB is built in a way that you can just add more OpenTSDB nodes to tolerate any, you know, potential like uh, just you know hits for that interface. So the question is, can you archive data? There is, a, there are, there are ways to the OpenTSDB allows you to export the information. Um, and you can export it into large files. You can export it and ship it directly to another HBase cluster if you want. Uh, so that is an option. I don't think there's a lot of kind of automation or pre-built tools for easily doing that right now. Um, but I think it's under the guise of just keep adding servers to support your increased load because arguably the monitoring system is one of the most valuable things you're going to have. And maybe you'll decide, you know, data older than two years we don't care about, and that's when you do archiving. But, you know, that's two years from now, so you got, you got plenty of time to figure it out. <laughs> Yes. What are the specs of our servers? I think our current cluster is running on uh, super micros for our data nodes. So HBase has a notion of a, a master kind of node and then a data nodes. So the data nodes are, are going to need to be beefier. They're going to actually be managing all the data. Um, so I think we're running super micros, uh, 10 one terabyte drives a, a piece. And the, the master nodes are, um, I think they're R410s. Um, you want to put more memory in your data nodes. You, you want to, your data nodes are pretty much like a MySQL server. You want a lot of memory, a lot of disk. If you want to put solid states in and you've got the money, go to town. Like, no one's going to stop you. Um, <laughs> except your budget, maybe. Uh, <laughs> um, but does that answer your question? How many transactions do we do? How many transactions do we do? I actually don't have that number. I know it's a lot more than our customer-facing clusters. Um, I think the last time I had looked at it, it was probably about 100,000 requests a second. How many? How many nodes? We are, I think we're running about 20 or 24 nodes. 
you first, real quick. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, this is uh, the storing the data or monitoring? Um, so the question is, is this only for HBase? The answer is no. You can, the, the monitoring, uh, the collectors, um, you can collect information from anything. You can collect information about rain in San Francisco and store that in OpenTSDB. You, you can legitimately use this for any time series data. Um, it's just gotten very, it's very popular in the monitoring world for operations. Um, the back end is HBase right now. I think there might have been a project to make it work with StatsD or, or something else as a back end somewhere, but I'm not 100% sure. But the, the back end is currently HBase, and the reason is because of how easy it is to scale. Is there a Cassandra effort? I actually don't know. Um, for 2.0, there might be. That, that's pretty cool. I actually haven't had a chance to use Cassandra yet, so. You had a question. How many unique? Okay. Um, so how, the question is, how does it scale as you uh, collect more metrics? Uh, so that's the reason we have like a 20 or 24 node cluster right now. It used to be four, um, and then we stood up a hundred front end machines, and that four node cluster fell over because our front ends report. I mean, just in a minute, they report two collections of all the metrics they were collecting. And I think they collect something like maybe 50 to 100 metrics a minute. Uh, no, it's probably more than that. I actually can't, I can't remember, but it's one of those, it's, it's orders of magnitude. Like once you, know, you look at that per minute, then you look at it over the course of a day, and then when you multiply it by the amount of server shipping, it adds up very quickly. And so you need to, it's one of those, a part of your capacity planning, when you know your new servers are coming in, you know, just based on the type of server, what kind of metrics is it going to report, and go based on that, you know, how much data will you be sending uh, per day. Can it scale up to half a million requests per minute? Probably. How many metrics? 100 million? No, half a million metrics per second. Half a million metrics per second, definitely. Um, I know we've tolerated half a million in, in a, when we had a brief outage and a, a recovery spike. So. More questions, guys? Come on. Yes? The question is, have we, re have we considered reducing granularity? We just did last week. We turned most of our metrics down to one minute from 30 seconds. Except MySQL, I was not going to part with 30-second MySQL collections. <laughs> yeah, and and so so, um, so one more time, what was the question? Yes. So, so the question is, have we considered effectively downsampling our our old data? Um, uh, yeah, there was an effort for that. Uh, it's, it's been put on hold because of other priorities, but um, it is something, I think that's part of the reason we were investigating using our Kafka pipeline we had set up to do something like that, to automatically, you know, like, to submit a job that would automatically do some downsampling, throw it into the Kafka pipeline, and then it would end up in our cluster again. And then once we have the downsampled, we can delete them. I think OpenTSDB 2.0 might have had some work around that to make that a little more automated or simple, but I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the chains log again. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's eight o'clock. I mean, any more questions? One last question. One last question. So the question is. So the question is, can you can you control the level of granularity for collections? Definitely. And if uh, if I go back to the collector slide, it's just which, if you're running T, you can create a directory called seven, and that means every seven seconds run this collection script. Um, and that, it'll run it every seven seconds. So you can control by which directory you place it under T, T collector. Is there a significant overhead? Is there significant overhead against what? MySQL? Yeah. So is there a significant overhead against MySQL if you change the collection interval? Um, we, like I said, we run it every 30 seconds without, I mean, I think it's more valuable to know what the server's doing every 30 seconds than five seconds. Um, but you can do five seconds. Um, you can, if you want, you can do one second. It's, it's up to you. 
So yeah, it, it, it's you use your judgment. Like based on what information you're trying to get out of something, you know, it, you know, maybe MySQL you can get away with doing a five second collection interval um, without issue. You know, it depends on your workload. I know for us the the amount of data we're serving um, and the amount of buffer pool we, we run with uh, collections more aggressive than thirty seconds get a little little choppy. Cool, is that it? Do you guys want me to show you the screenshot of Status Wolf again? It's really cool. I could go back to it. It's somewhere. Da, da, da. Almost there. So when you write the script, are you are that piece of the thread um, so um, our database team uh, and, oh there it is. Cool. I just want to leave this up. This is a really cool picture. Yeah, so initially, um, my coworker and I, we had written a connector to OpenTSTD in our own kind of week over week graphing. Um, and then a few other people worked on it. And that, you know, that was one of those things that grew organically over time. And then we also use that for our capacity uh, modeling kind of stuff. So we have a cron job that kicks off uh, once every day and another one that kicks off every week to look at, you know, do we have any auto increment counters that are getting near a maximum value, like a max int or a max medium int or a max big int, which if it gets to a max big int, we're in trouble. Um, do we have, you know, our, how much has our data grown over the past week? And so we get emails about those daily that we pull from OpenTSDB. Um, and then this was a tool that was uh, started separately. It was, it was inspired by the stuff we wrote, I think. Um, and the, the plan was to try and make it so it was open source from the start because we really want to contribute something back to the community using this tool because one of the biggest complaints is that the interface is very ugly. Um, and it doesn't have some of the power that you want it to. And in our case, week over week graphs was the biggest one. Um, but like I said, this tool has the ability to do anomaly kind of graphing. And um, you can set, when you build a dashboard, you can set it to auto update on some interval or to show you some different time span uh, for each of them. Yes? The black background makes it look cool. Yes, I agree. The black background makes this look very cool. And if you want, you can change the CSV and make it some, you know, baby blue color or something. If that's, you know, if that's what you want. Is it written in R or is it written in so this tool is primarily written in PHP um, with a lot of JavaScript. I think uh, a lot of the graphing is done with D3.js, um, and that's the thing is OpenTSDB. It's just an API call effectively that hands you back a bunch of ASCII data, and you just have to tokenize it and do what you want with it. And so we have PHP do that. We uh, we have. PHP also do some caching so that this stuff even runs even faster. Um, but yeah. 